Salutations, ladies and gentlemen. The Knife Raven here, back again with another video. And in today's video, yes, you read the title correct. I will be talking about some terrible knives today. And I got a comment. I had suggested this as a video idea, and I got a comment giving me the go ahead that it was a good idea. And even if only one person sees this video, this is for you. So, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, some terrible knives, which ones? You'll find out, trust me. Some of the first knives on the list might not seem that terrible, but I guarantee once you get to the end of the list, we might have some contenders with, with um, Nick Shabazz and his collection of Z Hunters, because I'm convinced these are some of the worst knives known to man. So strap in, get a snack, get a drink, prepare your eye bleach, because you're about to see some absolute horrors of cutlery. So, without further ado, let's begin. So, what is the first of the worst? Well, the first of the worst is this knife. Now, you've seen this before. This is the Eyewitness Lambfoot basic line. You may have seen this before if you'd seen my other videos on my other channel, but that's aside from the fact. This is a knife that you're probably already looking at, particularly this part of the blade. And no, this is not some form of weird stainless steel patina. This is a experiment that went very wrong and didn't fix the knife. My dad thought he could um, correct this knife and its issue, but unfortunately that didn't help. This is his knife now. He took it because I was going to get rid of it. Um, I did buy this from the famous Sheffield shop, and thankfully the famous Sheffield shop and their customer service is absolutely unbelievably phenomenal. Please go check them out. They're, they're wonderful. They sent me a free one, uh, as an apology for this, and the other one I reviewed, it was a lot better. It only had one flaw, which was a gap, and aside from that, it was an excellent knife. I like it, I carry it, I appreciate it, and I'd recommend it, so... No, I'm not a dishonest reviewer, but I will warn you, if you buy one of these, there's a 50% chance, at least from my experience, that you might get one with some issues and a 50% chance that you'll get a very good working knife. In fact, I'd say it's higher than 50% on the latter because I've seen many people's takes on these knives and quite a few of them have said that they've had near perfection or at very least well above the average, say, Rough Rider or Case, and the price is very low. So the majority of these are good, but of course you're going to get your one bad one in the batch. Speaking of which, this was probably made on a Monday morning or a Friday evening, as they say. And what's wrong with it? Well, I'll stop blabbing and explain. Now, for the good, the pins are flat, the transitions are good, there's no real gapping, no blade play, the stamp is good, the grind is okay. So what's the problem? That. That is the problem. Now, for those who've seen my Webermesser video, you know I was complaining about a warped blade there. This blows that out of the park, plants it on a rocket ship, sends it into outer space, through a black hole, across space-time, and then chucks it into a volcano summoning an asteroid that causes Armageddon, because that is ridiculous. What is this? I need to know. What, 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 what? Okay. I know there are a few people working at Eyewitness in the pocket knife department. Lee White is the most well-known. He makes the premier collection Barlow's that are superb. I have one. It's exquisite. I believe he made uh, the basic Barlow of mine. I can't vouch for that for certain. The same thing goes with my other lamb foot, which was also quite good. Now, I don't know if this was just him having a bad day, or some other apprentice of his who's not quite sure how to make an excellent knife, but whatever happened here, it was partly the craftsman's fault, and it was also whoever was packaging them and shipping them, because they should have noticed this. Again, I don't fault the famous Sheffield shop at all, because... They didn't, well, granted, you could argue that they could have checked them, but then if they had checked them, that would have been opening the package, and 
they wanted to send it new and everything. But aside from that, yeah, this this is just... Why did they send this out? Um, why did Taylor's Eyewitness think that this was a good example of something that they should send out? So again, if, if someone can give me some insight on who made this, I'd like to know. But whoever did was not having the best day, because I know that they can do a lot better than this. I've got other knives that can vouch for that, and I myself can vouch for that. So yeah, that's number six. Keep in mind, that is the least terrible knife here. Let that sink in for a moment. All right, has it sunk in? Good. So, next knife, this. This is a little pen knife that I found in an antique store. Keep in mind, I don't carry it because A, it's antique, and B, it's got a few flaws. Uh, French nail nick with match strike poles. Very sharp clip point blade with a swedge. Stainless steel, supposedly, despite terrible staining. It's made by Premier. I believe that's a USA company. Very well used and sharpened, as you can see. Pen blade, which is pretty good in most respects. However, the blade can be moved quite easily, which could cause some sort of issue in closing it. Also, the clip blade rubs against the side when being opened. It's also very offset. Look at that. That's another offset blade. Terribly wonky. What happened there? Yikes. That's, that's really bad. Now, the huge issue I have with this knife is this. This gap in between these two bolsters and the blade. Normally, when there's blade play, you can just pinch the knife handle and the knife blade and just see if there's any movement. This knife, I can hold in one hand and just go... And you can hear and see that this knife wobbles a fair bit. Now, this is very noticeable. And this, this was granted in my knife newbie days. I just saw it, thought it looked nice, and I still think it looks nice. And I bought it from an antique store. But certainly not a good knife and not one I'd carry. Granted, pocket knife standards have elevated in the last few years, I'm sure back then that was considered high quality, but not today. So that's number five. <clears throat> uh, something in my throat there. That was number five. Number four. This is a knife I've reviewed before. Now granted, I was a lot worse at reviewing back then, and thus it was very unprofessional. Also, the name of the company, I said Cotellery Michael Ferruccio. Um, it's actually Cotellery Michelle. I correct myself there. Um, if if Michelle Ferruccio is watching that, I apologize. Um, my mistake. However, this knife, probably my bigger mistake in the video, is not using the incorrect name for the company, but rather saying that the knife was great and good and excellent. It does still look okay. It looks like a neat knife. Now, again, I'll start with the positives. Um, even grind up here. Pins stick out, but that's part of the design. Nice, sleek looking handle. Very well balanced. Blade doesn't stick out, has decent centering, if not a little bit off to the right. Nail nick is good. Excellent half stop. Also good um, uh, stamp. Very nice, strong snap. Again, this Knife is a traditional design, which means there's no stop pin, and I don't know if you can see, but there's a very slight chip. This is some very slight blade wrap up there. And granted, this blade wrap still needs to be fixed, so closing it isn't going to make it that much worse, but even just if a couple times, I want to demonstrate how strong this knife snaps shut, despite, yes, I know, I'm going to sharpen it and then... Uh, walk it down instead of just snapping it, but just listen to this. That's a very nice spring. Very strong half stop. Very, very nice. I just like how that sounds. Now granted, that is a, that is a very noticeable benefit. No blade play, by the way. It's got a good amount of tension, which means if you're pressing on it, it will take a lot before you can eventually close it. You can see my finger is turning... Yeah, there, there's actually an indent in my thumb, based on how hard I was pushing that blade. So this is a very safe knife, despite not having a lock. 
Now, very good overall in most ways, but the big issue here isn't the blade wrap. And it isn't even this, by the way. This is supposed to be a movable, I presume, lanyard hole or something. And it turns out that it's not very good at moving because you can see it broke. This part is no longer attached. So it's kind of half hanging there as opposed to being fully attached, which is unfortunate. So yeah, you now have a wobbly loop thing. Also, the handle is chipped. I believe it started looking like that pretty soon after I received it, and just more of this kind of shaved off, which is one of the downsides of having a non-natural handle material. No, I'm not biased. Be quiet. Well, I guess I'm completely biased. But that's that's not the flaw here. The flaw here is this. Yeah, look at that. Now, I, I can already, I can hear people. I can hear people. You're going to go, oh, but, but, you know, it's an inexpensive knife, and it's for a working person. They're, they don't care about, you know, gaps. Gaps don't affect the function of the knife. Look, if you buy a cooking pot, and that cooking pot is ridiculously discolored in one spot, or even worse, has a hole in it, or is warped, it may not be put on a shelf as a collector's piece, but I still want it to be sturdy enough and look decent enough that I won't fear it falling apart halfway through using it. So no, I don't care if this is, oh, it's acceptable to some people. It isn't acceptable to me, and I guarantee about 80 to 90% of people in the knife community, particularly the traditional knife community, this would not be acceptable to them either. And for $30, that sure isn't okay. My other Ferrocio, granted, is better in the gapping department. However, it does have even worse blade wrap. That's my fault again. Traditional knife, no stop pin, blah, blah, blah. But that that is just what, what happened there. What went on there? Again, Monday morning, Friday evening. Because that just looks ugly. Now, this gap runs from the top of the bolster, down through the handle, past all the pins, to the very back of the knife, and it actually gets worse at the back. Now I was using this knife outside, and just for the sake of it, I wanted to see just how much could fit through that gap. Now I was able to get an entire maple leaf through a gap. That's not good. If I can get a maple leaf through a gap, and I'm sure a lot of people will think that that's not that big. Yes, but there shouldn't be any gaps at all. I shouldn't be able to fit a speck of dust through a knife. So the fact that I was able to shove a leaf into a knife and get it stuck halfway through the handle and have to pull it out by opening the blade and washing out the inside and then oiling it so it doesn't rust. By the way, they were supposed to be using stainless steel here. The blade may be stainless, but this certainly is, and this was rusty as hell. I had to get this cleaned and everything, and it still doesn't look good. This, it just... Yes, I'm getting salty. I know. I know. I know. I'm sure most of my viewers are not used to this. Um, but I just can't help it. My, I reviewed this before, and I was giving it a great review and saying it was an excellent knife. Please, um, this is a formal thing. Any of my reviews posted, I'd say, before... Uh, What's a good time? What's a safe time, I'd say? I guess I'd say posted before the year 2021. Actually, no, even that's not. Any, any review posted before summer 2021, disregard as mostly just bad. Now, granted, I still did give good reviews to Open L's and such, which I don't take back. But a lot of my old videos, I was way too ignorant to flaws. Or it's just that I was less snobby and was able to appreciate knives with flaws. I still can. I mean, one of my favorite knives is a Michael May Custom. It has gaps, quite noticeably. The file work hides a good portion of it, but you can... If I hold it up to light, you might be able to see some of them. Maybe not now. Also, the blade is 
slightly off, but you know, it's not a huge deal. I love this knife though, and it has flaws. But no, th this is just unacceptable. This gap is terrible and you can fit a leaf through it. And there are also gaps on the other side. There's a gap in between the uh, plastic handle and the liner. It just looks messy and terrible. This isn't a good knife. It's it's bad. Maybe I just got the one really bad one, but it's not looking good for Ferragio. So, uh, that one aside, that one really got me worked up. This one's going to be a bit quicker. This is number what? We on number four already? Six, five, four, three, number three here. This is number three. This is a stiletto, just like that one. However, this one has the traditional guard. Now, this was bought in my very early knife days, back when I just thought, ooh, that knife looks cool. I want it. Doesn't matter that it's a gas station knife that's made out of steel that they found at some dump site. But, you know, it, it's fine. It's still remains intact, which I can't say about the other knife that's over there. But, um, you know, fake wood handle, presumably some sort of resin wood, brass pins, steel liners, the gapping is slightly bad, but not terrible. Ergonomically sound, it's good. But what's the issue? Well, the first thing is, blade scrapes, when you open it, bad centering, and it does lock up it sounds pretty solid, but trust me, listen to this, okay? Hear that? Yeah, I can hold this knife and just shake it, and you will hear absurd amounts of blade play. Not as bad as this little one in some ways, but still, it doesn't look like much, but if you're hearing it, it's 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 horrendous. I mean, a lot of people buy these because they think, you know, they're yeah they're, they're possible deterrents if someone were to ever approach them with nefarious intent. And I can't say I'd ever carry one of these for that or really much of anything. They're just too bulky, too menacing. They make people dive under tables. And honestly, this one isn't even that nice looking. So I have no reason to carry this, but if I ever was, if you were telling me this is the knife you're getting to be dropped in a jungle full of mutant zombies that are trying to kill you while you slowly starve to death, I would just give up. Because I feel like if I were to use this for anything, cutting into a tree branch, cutting some food, uh, shaving... Uh, shaving a branch, feather sticking, or using it to possibly deter said zombie, it would, I'd fear that the lock would disengage halfway through because of how unsteady this blade is. It's just terrible. I mean, it's $12, but saying a knife is cheap used to be a good excuse to justify bad quality, but after I saw what companies like OpenL can produce, for 12 or a rough rider can produce for what 12 to 20 dollars i will no longer use that excuse price is not all that determines a knife's value and if i get a bad knife for a price when i know i could have bought an open l for the less that knife is just it's bad in my eyes nothing will change my mind next knife this one wasn't mine it kind of is now but it is only because it was terrible my dad bought this and yeah, it's another stiletto. I'm starting to notice a pattern here. Italy. Hey, Italy. If anyone from Italy in the cutlery trade is listening, listen up. What is the deal? What's the deal? With suddenly not making manual folding stilettos anymore that are of good quality. I mean, you could argue this is a manual folder, but it doesn't look like the traditional stiletto with the cross guard, and it's a slip joint. Where are the knives that look like this? Well, not this. This is ugly. They look more like that. That are of good quality, made on home soil. What, what, what happened? Where are they? As far as I can tell, Falcon is the only brand that does that, and I don't even know if they're around anymore. AGA Campoline, by the way, did a limited run of swing guards, their manual. I'm currently trying to find one right now. But... 
aside from old stock, no new knife makers like Lion Steel or Fox or um, what other brands? Mazarin. They don't make those kinds of knives anymore. I don't know why. It's such a timeless pattern. Um, rant aside, I mean, this whole video is a rant. This thing, which is specifically made to look like a press button knife, even though it completely is not. I mean, you can press this button all day and it won't open the knife. And this is just a bad assisted opener. You can see it's got some very bad lining up of the handle to the bolster. Speaking of bolsters, the bolsters on here are loose, as with my other Krieger manual, which looks nicer than this one, but still is bad. Not as bad. Um, but well, what's the issue? I'm, you know, slightly loose bolster, you could just tighten the screw. Yeah, well, what about this? Yeah, I don't know about you, but um, when I open a knife, I definitely want to have the ability to... Um, to cut something like food. Oh wait, never mind. This this part's preventing me from. How, how do you use this? You'd have to hold it like this high up to get any bit of the edge. This is absolutely atrocious. And even when it arrived, it was already doing this. It wasn't as bad. The blade was probably about here. You could already see that it was starting to move a bit more this way. And just over time, it got worse and worse until it's all the way over here. This is unacceptable. It, it, I don't need to explain why this is bad. Anyone, no matter how new you are to the knife community, you'll look at that and you'll think, that looks bad. Because it does. This is bad. I mean, also, blade play. Terrible, horrible blade play. And a lock that is so unsteady. Look at this. This is supposed to be a liner lock. What happened? What happened? Who made this? What? Oh boy. <laughs> and people used to say that politics got them to, <laughs> to be angry. Politics don't do that to me the same way that knives like this do. This is just terrible. And this was $30. This could have bought you two. You could have bought two Openel number sixes or, or a number eight and a number four could have bought so much better than, the, than this terrible blade wobbly up and down side to side non-locking liner lock folder thing tactical piece of garbage oh and yeah it, they also customized it i guess i didn't even take this apart it was just like this it fell apart on its own if you just wiggle the handle enough eventually the knife itself just kind of falls apart and well, if you just wiggle it a little, guess what? You suddenly have a very strange form of... Yeah, there you go. You got a weird-looking butterfly thing. I don't, I don't even know what this is. This is terrible. This is bad. It explains itself. It's a piece of garbage. Um... I'm honestly debating whether I should throw this out or just put it in some glass encrusted or gold encrusted glass cabinet with velvet lining of, you know, worst knives ever conceived. This thing is just I I'm not setting this on the the other ones I set on the table just so that you could know how far we were into the I'm not even setting that on the table cuz I don't want to hurt your eyes anymore. You know what? You've suffered enough. I'll 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 get rid of all of them. All right, whew, last knife. This is a knife I actually hate less than the one I just showed you. Now, why is it number one? Well, it's number one because this is one of those knives that is so bad, like so unbelievably terrible, so ridiculously horrendous that it's actually kind of funny. The other ones are just kind of bad. This one I feel bad for because it's giving a bad reputation to Eyewitness when I know they can make good knives. This one I can excuse because standards weren't as good back then and it's an antique. This one I can sort of excuse because it was made by a brand that's been a little on and off but does make decent stuff. 
This one I can't excuse because it's just inexpensive, but, you know, I have it anyway. It's not the worst knife, but it's bad. This thing I can't excuse at all. It's just bad. This I can because it's so terrible, it actually makes me laugh. I'm going to, um, in in honor of, of, of Nick Shabazz and his Z Hunter saga, which is one of my favorite knife sagas in the world, I am going to try my very best to review this knife as a positive outcome. I'm going to be positive about this. I present to you this, the worst knife ever conceived. Or, sorry, the, the best knife. I'm trying to be positive. So we start off by having a logo that you can't see, just to add to the enigma of this knife, with a brand name that you can't read unless you have a microscope, which is helpful because it encourages you to buy a microscope and then pursue something like biology or uh, learning about different forms of science. So this is actually encouraging you to become a smarter person. I, I, th I really like that, that um, business choice. The sheath itself is made of a cheap kind of fake leather, which is intentionally meant to throw you off the scent. You're expecting a cheap knife in the sheath, but what you're really getting is a knife that they will pay you to take because it's that bad. That's the sneaky part. Now, this is the knife. Now, I know what you're already thinking. Hold on. Don't be judgmental. This is not a flaw. This is a safety feature, okay? Look, hear me out. And you might look at this and be like, that looks unsafe. And I know, I get it. I thought, I was before I was, I was aware, I was one of the unenlightened ones. I thought that this could be a bad idea. I thought this was a risk. But then, I realized it's a safety. You see, if you're, you have, you have this knife on your belt, you pop open the sheath and you're not looking, and you reach your hand and you poke yourself, you'll look down and you'll remind, you'll be reminded that you're holding a, a, a dangerous thing that you have to be careful with. You have to be safe around it. So when you open this sheath and you reach in, you poke your hand on the knife blade, it's not going to be a serious injury. It's just a little poke. You know, it's not enough to break the skin even. But it'll be just enough to remind you, oh, I'm handling a knife. I should be careful and look as I watch myself pull the knife out of the sheath. See, if you were just reaching in blindly, you just went, oh, open it, and then you poke... You're, you're, you pull your knife out of the sheath, that's promoting uh, irresponsibility. But you see, if you have your hand get poked, you'll look down and be, oh, right, this is a knife. I'll watch, I'll open the sheath, and then pull the knife out, pinching it safely, and then I'll be watching so I won't poke myself when I'm not looking. You see, this, this is ingenious. This is the first time I've seen such a safety on a knife. Now there's more. It gets better. We first of all have ugly brass pins. I mean, creatively placed. And there's nothing to contrast them. It just looks bad. I mean, creative, artistic, like everything in a modern art museum. Absolute utter garbage. I mean, you know, it's all subjective. It's all based on your perspective. I just can't appreciate modern art. That's all. So anyways, aside from the ingenious safety feature... You've got this. This is a brand new innovation in the knife community. It's a lockback, but it's actually a friction folder. Now, hold on, hold on. I know you're thinking, whoa, whoa, whoa. They, add, they make a knife that's supposed to have a safety feature, but then that safety feature doesn't work. No, you don't understand. This is a trick. This is a trick. This is to see if you pass the wisdom test and move on to the world where the, the astral deities will congratulate you by giving you GEC knives for the rest of eternity. No, what this means is it reminds you, even though the knife looks like it should be safe with a lock, never underestimate the fact that it could close on you at any moment. You may think that it's got a lock. You may think that this is safe, but always be on the lookout because you never know when that lock knife you've got might just be ineffective and it might close on you. So this is reminding you to be vigilant it's reminding you to always make sure that your knife is safe and to check to see if it actually locks before closing it. See, this is genius. This is brilliant. Whoever made this, he, I don't know who made this, someone at the the bone edge or whatever. I mean, Nobel Peace Prize. Give him an Oscar. I don't know if he's ever been in a movie, but he deserves one. 
This is just genius. This is brilliant. Honestly, I've never seen something so amazing. He and Leonardo da Vinci, th they are on the same page. Whoever made this, he he's just, he he's a god amongst men. This is brilliant. I can't stop talking about how wonderful this is. This is just amazing. Um, Blade play, surprisingly, okay, seriousness comes back in. Blade play, very slight. There's a very slight amount of it. You can't even really see it. Yay, the knife did something right. Transitions are actually decent. Yay, the knife did something right. Pins are pretty flush. Yay, the knife did something right. Now back to my fake positivity. So, as for the grind on this, this is a brilliantly done grind. It's a hollow grind with no sharpening choil. And the best part is, I don't know about you, but another safety feature besides the, um, the, the knife reminder that you're holding a knife so it pokes you, and the fact that it's a lockback with no actual means of locking, this is a safety feature. You see, this is the new factory edge. And I've done this so many times before, and I'm not scared because, look, I can run this along my arm all day, and look, it doesn't shave any hair. It's, it's like they did this on purpose. They wanted to make the knife safe. Don't you see? They wanted to make it safe. So, so this is the safest knife ever. You reach into your, your sheath, and it pokes you to remind you that you're, you have a dangerous tool. It makes you think it's a lock blade, but it tests you to see if you are one of the wise ones and check to see if it actually works and that the lock works. And you supposedly have a sharp edge, but it's actually dull to make sure you never get hurt at all. Just brilliant. Also, the creative choice of putting the ugly logo, I mean, artistic logo, uh, right on the blade and having it be cut off, ha, pun intended, by the hollow grind, which is also badly done, subjectively done it it it's a creative choice even though it looks kind of ugly but you know it's, it's all in the eye of be the beauty is in the eye of the beholder right handle material is something i don't know what this is it could be some sort of weird fake wood it could be paper mache that they painted to look kind of vaguely like buffalo horn i don't know it's a creative choice for all i know this is something from a faraway planet that fell through space from an asteroid and was re recovered from from some crash site where an alien landed. I don't know. It's it's something that I'm too stupid to understand. Also, here it says handmade in Pakistan. So of all the countries for quality, Pakistan, I think this elevates them to the number one. Forget England, you know, Sheffield, Lee White, Michael May, all of you. No, no, no. Uh, Lion Steel Italy, GEC. No, they are not the best knife anymore. The best knife company in the world is this company from Pakistan. You cannot argue this. You 